Welcome to this edition of the Million Dollar Mastermind Podcast. This is where we pick the brains of high achievers from all walks of life and get their hard-earned, real-world insights on winning. I'm your host, Larry Wydell. You know, it's, it's, it's hard, frustrating, and uh, confusing, draining to start a business, you know, to make money and yeah. build something profitable that actually works. And so what I try to sprinkle out there to people on the way up is that success will be uh, more, it, it'll be so much more worth it. The price you pay will be mm-hmm. so much more worth it to you once you get, fight your way over the top of the hill and get into what you think right now would be a dream life, mm-hmm. but it will probably be mind-blowingly better than you can possibly imagine right now while you're going through the yeah. grind and grunt your way yeah. to glory stage. And so sh- would you mind sharing just a couple of the kind of cool experiences that you've had been able to uh, enjoy and, 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 you know, meet, experience, event, travel, yeah. location, whatever, yeah. that for you were, were special, you know, because we all, you know, we know the resorts we go to yeah. and all that, but, you know, yeah. the really extra cool, some things that even su- surprised even you. Yeah. I have a lot of doctors and lawyers as friends who have a lot of money and are very successful. And one of the patients of my friend, Dr. Lyons, who invented this oxygen water 20 years ago, she was the queen of Malaysia, which is a Muslim country. And she had a stroke. She wasn't able to walk or talk. The tabloids basically thought that was it. But she made a miraculous recovery. So she was able to walk without a cane. And she was able to talk again, which was surprising because the doctors really couldn't understand it. But it was because of the treatment that she went through for my friend who was the doctor. So she threw this party that was a week long. We flew into Kuala Lumpur. And I met kings and queens of other dictator countries from Africa and Southeast Asia. So you know, like these other countries, maybe they're democracies or claim to be democracies, but there's basically a few people who have all this money and power, and then these other people are poor. So right. I got to spend, I haven't spent a lot of time with leaders of other countries, Yeah, but it's so neat when you're able to meet leaders. Like I have, to, like some of these countries I forgot were actually countries. I had to like Google them and see who these people <laughs> were. And, you know, there was a ton of security you can imagine, but it was right. so cool just spending a week with royalty and just seeing how they behave. Because I've spent a lot of time with billionaires in Silicon Valley, because that's kind of where you know, I got my start. But there's, there's a level above the Silicon Valley billionaires. Because the Silicon Valley billionaires are like always moving and meetings and busy and like, right. you know, like that. But the level above that, Larry, I call that infinity and money. Also, and also t-shirts and jeans too. You know, they're not, they <laughs> yeah. don't have royal yeah. thrones and gold, uh, everything. Yeah. But keep, keep going. We're walking through the royal palace and the servants say, anything that you see that's yellow is solid gold. Like, wow, Wow. that's that's impressive. And the first meal that we had there, I remember it started at 7 p.m. And they brought out the most amazing food. The servants were just bringing out dish after dish. And it was so good. I was like, wow, this is like like these lobsters and shrimps. And like, you can imagine, like they have infinity money so they can eat whatever they want. And I mean, this is just wild. And I was eating all this food. It was so good. And I just looked around and other people were hardly eating at all. I'm thinking, you guys are idiots. This food is so good. What are you, you, you guys are so dumb. But then after about 40 minutes in, I realized I was full. And <laughs> then the food kept going for hours, for like another two or oh, three no. hours. So I had to, oh. the, so when I stopped eating, cause I realized I was full, the queen sat kind of diagonally to me and she glared at me. And I thought, oh no, this is offensive because if you stop eating, then it's time to go to the bathroom, yeah. you know, kind of take yeah. care of business so I could continue to eat again. And, <laughs> but then I learned my lesson because then the next day we went to lunch at the previous queen's place. And then I'm like, okay, I know how this goes. This is going to be like a three hour thing where they just have to like, just, the servants just keep like bringing out all the food. I think that that's like what you do because you have to show like you're right. powerful. You have to show like you. So like we just went from meal to meal 
And every one of these meals is like three hours long. And then after the meal, you know what we do? No. We pull no. up YouTube on the big screen and we start singing karaoke, like 80s karaoke or the Beatles. And here they are. This is a Muslim country where they sort of speak English. I mean, they speak English. All the royalty and business people speak English, but the other people like barely speak English. Yeah. And I'm singing Let It Be with <laughs> other people in the royal family. I'm just having a great old time. And just they're just pulling up stuff on YouTube. And we that first night, we went until 2 a.m. So wow. this is what they, I spent the whole week. I didn't know what to expect, but the whole week with royalty, we just ate food, sang karaoke, and then hung out. There was no business meet. Now, every once in a while, someone would come in and they like whisper, you know, some sort of business transaction for like two minutes. Yeah. And then they, that person would scurry off. And that was it. And then we're back to eating and karaoke. But the whole week, I felt like we were just partying the whole time. And wow. we went to bed late every night, like 2 a.m. or whatever. And we wouldn't meet again until noon because then it was time to eat lunch again. I'm like, how do these people live? But then I realized they have infinity money. They can do whatever they want. Why, why right. would they want to work? They own everything. That I was staying at the nicest hotel. There's a bunch of five-star hotels. It's like New York, right? This is not some like third world place. It's like a modern downtown. It's guys, they have the, you know, the KL Tower. And the Patronus Tower, the, at, at the time, a few years ago, it was the, tall, the, the two tallest buildings in the world. Right. Or like yeah. the Burj and these other ones came up. And I was staying in this fancy five-star. It wasn't the Ritz, but it was something like that. It was, it was this huge suite that I had, because why not? And it was all being paid for by them anyway. So uh, the, the sister of the queen came up to me, Nora Abdullah. And she said, oh, so how do you like the hotel? I'm like, yeah, it's pretty nice. I have a huge suite on the top floor. And she said, oh, I own that building. Oh, cool. And then we were looking out. She said, I own that one and that one and that one. I also own that one. And basically, like, she owns half of downtown. I'm like, that's wow. pretty cool. And then she said, oh, and uh, I'm, I'm looking at opening another one. Do you think I should open it in, in my next one in London? Or do you think I should open it in Paris? I'm like, I am like, that is like multiple levels above me for this sort of recommendation thing. But like, I like London. So then we hung yeah. out in London. We, we were at... The, we were at uh, Harrods, you know, Harrods and in, in right. yeah, in London. Yeah. And we were having tea. And she's like, yeah, I think, I think we'll open another one in London. I'm like, oh, I am not in a position to advise you. I stay in a lot of hotels, yeah. but who am I to like determine where you should open your next one? You know? Yeah. Well, if she's got <laughs> infinity money, I, I kind of expect you to say, why not both? You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I wasn't thinking. That, I mean, it caught me so off guard because oh, when was the last yeah. time someone said, where do you think we should place our next hotel? Next five star hotel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the big, like 60 story thing that's, you know, a, a fantastic five star hotel uh, right in the middle of downtown, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, I don't think I, I can top that, but the, uh, I was wondering what the entertainment was going to be uh, <laughs> with all those kings and queens for a week. So uh, they did, they did fly in other uh, celebrity musicians and folks like that, which was fun. Yeah. But well, the main thing was just karaoke. I, they just want to be among themselves, right? They, they yeah. didn't bring in a lot of these other outsiders. Just, these are people that have known each other for a long time. And I noticed these families are really, really tight. So it was uh -huh. a special honor for me to be invited because I'm not a family member, but because I'm good friends with Dr. Lyons, I get to meet. And, and so after that first night, the next night we were with uh, Richard Ling, who's the coconut water billionaire. So this guy, he uh, has the factories that process, like, you know, all the coconut stuff gets processed in the same, and then it's like marketed or whatever. Yeah. He had stage four lung cancer and the doctor gave him just a few months left to live. And he, of course, when you have infinity money, you can do like whatever you want. You can buy whatever treatment that you want. But at that point, it's like all the money in the world. It's like Steve Jobs dying. It doesn't, doesn't matter when you have all the money in the world. But he also went to this cocoon therapy, had a fantastic recovery and he held a party too. So he rented out the KL Tower which is kind of like the Space Needle, basically, but a super tall building. And we celebrated. And then he invited his other friends. And so I got to meet all these other people that I have no business meeting. But why not? We're all hanging out. It's fun. It's not like this conference room. Like I was thinking like in the American Airlines days or Yahoo days where like there's cubicles and there's conference rooms and there's like meetings and protocol and bosses and status. And But here, we're just all hanging out. It's great. It's awesome. And so I've... It I prefer hanging out with people like that versus like being in a conference room wearing a suit and going through the meeting agenda and having a Zoom call. Yeah. I don't want to do anything like that. Yeah. And what 
But your takeaway, what did you notice or did you notice anything about yourself that uh, influenced you, uh, you know, afterwards from that experience, that exposure, you know, that you yeah. know, radiating, mm -hmm. uh, you know, those levels beyond that most people are never exposed to, but just being carried up there and exposed to it for a long period of time. It wasn't just like, yeah. you know, you saw a movie yeah. or something, but yeah, uh, well, Larry, it's like flying first class for the first time, right? Right. Because, you know, when you, fly, when you fly coach from New York to London, that kind of sucks, you know, because it's usually a red eye and you wake up all tired. That's why they call it the red eye. And then you experience first class for the first time and they make a bed for you and you get right. to sleep and, and they make this nice meal for you and they ask you what you want on your Sunday or they bring out the caviar card. Like, this is kind of nice, right? Yeah. And so being around people like that causes you to raise your expectations. Yeah. Makes you want to fly first class every time. Because why not? Right? Right. It makes you realize like, you know what? Fine. I might feel that I'm successful because I've made money doing certain things. But these other people are several levels beyond me. And every time, every time you level up and you think you've made it, then you see it's just a false hill. Then you see that actually there's another summit that you didn't see that's even further up ahead. So every right. time I've leveled up, I see that there is even further levels that I didn't see. So I'm always in the middle. Like other people think I'm successful or they'll you know, blow smoke up my ass, but there's so many levels above me. It's insane. Yeah. Unbelievable. Thanks so much for your, your time, Dennis. Uh, uh, I could say, for some reason, I was gonna, is there any questions that you want to ask or that I haven't asked that, that you want to address? I think it's great spending time with you. I'm curious to see, you know, based on what I'm sharing, because you've interviewed so many other people that have been successful in different ways. How, how does my experience compare with what you've heard from other people? Yours, uh, let's see. Yours is a little bit more, uh, it's interesting in that your experience, first of all, you've accomplished a lot. And so why it's, I'm very picky about who I, I interview. <laughs> well, thank I'm you. I'm a, honored. I'm super honored. I'm, I'm not, I'm, it, it's because it's my weakness. I'm not a good enough uh, interviewer to get good stuff out of somebody who's never learned anything, you know, and they've never accomplished anything. And so somehow I feel like I'm trying to squeeze blood out of a stone, you know, but yeah. if I get around someone like you, I, my, it's, first of all, it's so much easier for me because I ask a question and boom, 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 it rolls, rolls off. And what I would tell you that, and by the way, in my real life, you know, I coach million dollar earners, so I'm used yeah. to this type of thing. But what I, I like about you is that you cover uh, technical things in a personable understandable way you know there's a lot of terms that go out there that might have uh had some people stretch but you know they need yeah. to be stretched you know if you're running a company you need to know these terms you know yeah. you need to get to where you hear them enough that you're familiar with them you know yeah and uh Especially you want to measure your uh, business probably important to know right <laughs> absolutely and if you want to get big you know the thing yeah. is if you want to get big this it opens people's eyes up to uh, how you can get big and how you can do the decisions that allow you to get big and stay on track. And so uh, I thought uh, it was, I was amazed as I was listening, how entertaining uh, you were and interesting, uh, even when we got into some of the technical uh, yeah. uh, questions that I asked, by the way, you know, I asked yeah. and I wanted the information, but how you kept, and I was thinking, <laughs> as you were answering is like that's how he got his standing ovation at toastmasters <laughs> you know because you know you have you have a way of seeing the issues uh in a way where you can communicate the humanity of it and the necessity of it the simplicity of it the, the logic of it in a very entertaining way and uh uh it's unique you know that is a unique type thing so yeah, I think you did absolutely incredibly well. And I judge that only by 
uh, my enjoyment of your your talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had fun. I appreciate you, Larry. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to us talking more in the future. If people want to follow up with you and really get, I mean, do you work with people, uh, companies? I do in certain circumstances. I like to see companies that already have something that's working well yeah. and they want to scale it because our whole thing is analytics. So if they want an audit on their analytics or if their advertising or tracking isn't quite right, that's something that our team can come in and look at. I coach a number of executives. Just I don't even want to do this. It's not even like a thing I offer. You can't you won't right. see it advertised anywhere, but yeah. enough people approach me. It's probably the same thing for you. Enough people approach me that I'll coach them. But it's also relatively expensive for most entrepreneurs to have. Well, the thing is, that if, if you probably do it like I do, like if you got involved in something, just be for the fun of it. You know, yeah. and uh, the exp- new experiences and a chance to spend time with somebody that, like you said, you know, the people that you're involved in these other projects, yeah. uh, you, you know, you're doing that for the fun of it, you know, create yeah. a million jobs and all of the real of that. It's yeah. like, what can I, you know, it's like when we had a, uh, an aborted, uh, by the way, uh, due to financial regulations, we, we never pulled it off, but we went to, our company was going to start a marketing financial services marketing organization over in UK in mm. 2003. But people said, well, why are you doing that? You know? And uh, I said, new experiences, new friends, you know, new information and uh, basically new, you know? And yeah. so uh, yeah. uh, you've got, the older you get, the easier it is to turn into a negative SOB. It is, <laughs> you know, because you see things go wrong and you know how things work, you know, seen it all before. And the hardest thing for all of us at all levels is to keep ourselves excited about what we're doing. And yeah. my compliments to you for doing such a good job of doing that for yourself, keeping yourself excited and energized, because I think you're going to do even bigger things in the future. And uh, I'm I just getting stay started there with you. Yeah, <laughs> I want to stay in in touch with you and uh, get a chance to hear about it down the road. Thanks so much. Thanks, Larry. Maybe we'll see you in Palm Beach next yeah, time. Yeah, if, if you get a chance, uh, we will make sure you have my number and uh, we'll go to Mar-a-Lago. We'll go wherever you want to go. Uh, I've never I was, been to Mar-a-Lago. I just had breakfast over there with my son this morning. So okay. I'm, I'm a lifetime member. So uh, let's anyway. do it. Yeah. All right, man. If you, in fact, if you get an extra day while you're there, we'll do it this week. Oh, shoot. I got to see about that. But I'm back here all the time. Every every month I'm back here. So we'll we'll make it work. And Palm Beach is easy to get to for me. Yeah, let's definitely do it. Okay, we'll make sure you have my number. All right. Yeah. Take care. Thank you, Dennis. Bye. Thanks, Larry. Talk soon. Thanks for listening to the Million Dollar Mastermind. If you felt there were any valuable takeaways from this episode, please take a minute and leave us a five-star review. Your feedback is important and really helps us get the word out to a wider audience. Remember, we have a valuable webinar that is absolutely free. Register for it right now at whiteallonwinning.com. Thanks for listening.